today we'll be debunking five widespread hair care myths from the fear of shampoo ingredients to natural cures. By understanding the real science behind all of this, it will lead to you making better decisions and you making better choices when it comes to healthier, thriving hair. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Angela. I am a trichologist and cosmetic chemist and I'm literally obsessed with everything beauty, skincare, hair care, scalp care, backed by science. Here we break down the facts, we debunk myths, and make sure that you get the best out of your routine without the fluff. So if you're all about science-backed beauty, please do not forget to subscribe and to hit the notification button to make sure that you get a notification each and every single time that I post a new video. Now let's get back into today's topic. Myth number one, sulfates in shampoos are dangerous and they can actually lead to hair loss. Sulfate ingredients like sodium lauryl sulfate or sodium lauryl sulfate have really gotten a bad reputation. You've probably heard about these ingredients stripping the hair and I actually believed in that same thing years ago. What I've also seen pretty often now, especially on TikTok, is that there are claims that it can actually cause hair loss or even that they're carcinogenic. Some people really insist to basically prevent using sulfates at all costs. And I really have to disagree. Sulfates are super effective ingredients when it comes to removing excess dirt and oil. Yeah, on its own, if you would bathe in it, they can be very harsh but the thing that you need to understand is that one ingredient doesn't determine how the overall product will feel or work. It's all about the full formulation. It a lot of the times is formulated with co-surfactants or other ingredients that will help softening that harshness that sulfates could give, making it a very elegant formulation that can still do its job but in a way more gentle way. In fact, I've noticed from personal use myself, a lot of sulfate-free shampoos nowadays are actually the stripping ones. You see a lot of detox shampoos that are sulfate-free, that are doing the exact, that are actually trying to mimic what sulfates can do, but sometimes in an even more harsher way because you want to get rid of all of the dirt. You can do that with a regular sulfate based shampoo as well. And when it comes to overall health concerns, both scientific and regulatory bodies have researched it and they found no credible evidence linking SLS to, for example, cancer or any long-term health issues. So do sulfates cause hair loss? Not directly. Harsh cleansing from any type of cleanser, sulfate-free or sulfate-based, in some cases can temporarily make your hair feel dry and brittle. That's why using a conditioner after shampooing is so important to get that softness back to get that positive charge back which will smooth everything out everything you do after shampooing is just as important as the shampooing itself to prevent long-term issues like for example breakage dry and brittle feel sulfates don't attack the hair follicles if you have a sensitive scalp yes sulfates might cause some irritation or dryness but some sulfate free shampoos can do the same thing and since we talked about sulfates we need to talk to the other elephant in the room, silicones. Silicones coat the hair and suffocate them, which eventually also leads to damage. Yeah. Um, if we gotta be extremely honest, every product that you apply to your hair coats it. It might not be a heavy coat, but it coats. As a matter of fact, I feel like a lot of people are substituting silicones with oils, but oils are actually way more heavier and would coat it even thicker in comparison to silicones, which are super thin and easy to spread. Silicones in serums, oils, and conditioners are often labeled as as being plastic that suffocates the hair. You might have heard that silicones cause buildup, making the hair drier over time because nothing else can penetrate the hair or even have a negative effect on your hair growth. A lot of people and especially the natural hair community with the curly girl method suggest for you to avoid silicones at all costs. In reality, silicones like the methicone and cyclomethicone are actually added to hair products because they're able to benefit how your hair looks and feels. They form 
along a thin layer around the hair strand, filling in possible damaged gaps from the cuticle and will protect the hair not only from its environment but also from hair to hair friction. It will also give you that slip and shine that everyone is looking for. But it also reduces tangling, meaning less breakage during brushing. So instead of wrecking your hair, they really help to save your hair from its daily wear and tear. Silicones are safe. They don't penetrate or alter the hair fiber. They work on the surface. And they've been used since the 1970s in hair care with no evidence of health harm. Also, as I mentioned before, hair is dead. It doesn't breathe, so it's not able to suffocate since hair doesn't need oxygen. Typical use of silicones are mainly used for the strands and not applied to the scalp. And even if some residue comes on the scalp, that doesn't directly mean that they clog your pores right away. What do you do then? You shampoo, just like you would with any other product that sits on top of your scalp. It eventually is all about personal preference, but just don't be scared of using it just because you heard that some method doesn't allow you to use them. Myth number three is all about the scalp, and that is that you should oil your scalp for healthy hair and hair growth, and that it's able to cure your dry scalp and hair loss. Regular scalp oiling is pretty common in certain cultures, for example, parts of Asia or Africa, being an essential part in their hair care routine. The belief is that applying oils to the scalp will fix dryness, eliminate dandruff, and even boost hair growth. And it does that by nourishing the follicles. Because if your hair is flaky, it must be dry and then it needs oil, right? In reality, yes, oil can have its benefits, but it's not a universal cure and it sometimes can even backfire. Like for example, if you have dandruff, dandruff flakes are often mistaken for the scalp being dry. And then you think, okay, oil will fix it. In reality, dandruff isn't caused by dryness. It's actually caused by an overgrowth of a yeast called melesthesia that we all have on our scalps. And this leads to irritation and flaking. This yeast actually feeds on oils. And this means not only your natural oils, so the sebum on your scalp, but also any oil that you apply. So if you apply that oil to your dandruff scalp, you might unwillingly be providing a buffet to that yeast, potentially worsening the condition. So that's why a lot of the times applying oil to a dry scalp is actually the opposite of good advice. Many flaky scalps don't need oil, they need an antifungal treatment. So what about hair growth and hair loss? While oils can improve the condition of your hair shaft, simply oiling the scalp hasn't been proven to spur new hair growth or significantly reduce pattern hair loss. Hair loss, especially when it's genetic, is driven by hormones and follicle sensitivity. And these are factors that oil cannot overcome. Some oils have a little bit of evidence when it comes to stimulating blood circulation. And no, we're not gonna talk about the rosemary oil one because that one you need to not, not even look into. But no oil has ever really proven to make hair grow faster. Now, oils are not bad for your hair. In fact, a lot of oils are excellent at conditioning your hair strands. Coconut, for example, has a unique ability to penetrate the hair fiber and reduce protein loss from the hair during washing, meaning that coconut oil can strengthen the hair and repair damage, which indirectly helps the hair to retain length, since, for example, ends will break off easily. So, for example, using an oil like coconut oil as a pre-shampoo treatment on the hair, not the scalp, could be beneficial. Oils similar to silicones also lubricate the hair, increasing slip, and minimizing mechanical damage when combing or brushing. So the key distinction when it comes to oils is hair versus scalp. Myth number four, natural remedies or DIY remedies are always better for your hair. Yeah. I'm just not a DIY full natural ingredient hair products person. People claim if it's natural, it must be good. If it's a chemical or synthetic, it must be bad. And this way of thinking really leads people to, for example, believe that something like homemade rice water, apple cider vinegar rinses, eggs and avocado masks, the list goes on, are better for your hair than the hair mask that you can find at the drugstore. There's also a belief that herbs and plants can magically cure issues like hair loss because they're from nature. The reality is that natural versus synthetic isn't as black and white when it comes to measuring safety and efficacy. Many natural ingredients can be amazing for the hair, like for example aloe 
vera certain plant oils like for example mentioned previously the coconut oil argan oil but many of these natural diy projects i call them projects or formulations <laughs> lack evidence or can even have a negative effect on your hair so when it comes to product formulation especially when you're targeting things like repairing damage or preserving color you need a delivery system to make a certain ingredient work so using homemade masks a lot of the times lack the ingredients that are actually able to make a product penetrate or to make a product stick to really help you out in the long term also something that we call molecular weight comes into play the lower the molecular weight the higher the chance that a ingredient is able to penetrate for example when you look at rice water rinses the molecules of the rice water that you've extracted are way too big to even penetrate so if there's any benefits that you experience it's all surface level not only that rice water for example contains starches some amino acids and inositol which can do a great job at basically coating the hair and adding a protective layer but that's all it does a conditioner can do the same thing but it can actually make your hair feel softer as well and you don't have to do the whole project and think about oh is it going bad or not or basically waste your rice and no peer reviewed studies have shown that rice water is able to make your hair grow faster if you could do anything it might help to reduce breakage but that as well is also debatable it can actually ferment and that could cause irritations on the scalp since that alters the scalp's ph while it's not harmful it's also not a guarantee to success it hasn't been tested or showed after tests that it can actually do big things let's just wrap it up because i feel like this video is already being kind of long i can do more of these videos do let me know if you have some myths that you like to debunk or you want me to go more in depth because obviously i can go way more in depth with all of these myths but we're gonna finish off with basically kind of a generalized one i would say and that is that i see a lot of hair hacks and these are the hair growth hacks that can actually like speed up your hair growth or speed up how fast your hair grows i get it everyone wants long luscious hair and nowadays you see a lot of hacks on the internet that can help you speed up the process think of trimming your hair to make the hair grow faster or brushing your hair over a hundred times since that will stimulate more growth or taking high dosages of biotin the reality is that your hair growth is determined by biology so i'm talking about genetics hormones overall health and also age for most people hair grows an average around 0.3 to 0.4 millimeters per day which is around 1 to 1.3 centimeters per month a half an inch for my american this can vary from person to person some can have 0.8 per month another one can have one and a half centimeters per month but know that it's always a slow and steady process no topical product or specific haircut is going to make your hair follicles so suddenly produce at a faster rate. If you want maximum hair growth, you need to focus on your overall health. Get blood work done. Have a well-balanced diet, which includes all your vitamins, minerals, proteins, carbs, fibers, everything that your body needs to thrive. Getting blood work done, for example, is important since certain deficiencies can lead to stagnation in hair growth or in some cases even lead to hair loss. Managing stress. I know that's easier said than done, but stress is a big factor that can can lead to all negative things not only hair but also skin how your body feels overall health we can really be self-sabotaging sometimes you can consider proven medical treatments like for example minoxidil which can help regrowth hair with certain hair loss conditions but again it won't speed up your hair growth rate the goal is to keep the hair healthy so it can grow without breaking that means gentle handling not over processing the hair regular cleansing regular conditioning and yes to sometimes trim those ends this way the hair that does grow won't break off at the end in conclusion there is no secret potion or way to double your hair growth rate it's just not a natural thing it's not a natural process that your scalp can do if you see any product or person promoting that their hair has grown four inches within a month be highly skeptical embrace the fact that hair growth is a gradual journey patience good care and realistic expectations 
will serve you way better than any mythical fix. Let's wrap everything up. Sulfates and silicones aren't the enemies that they're made out to be. Oils and natural remedies have their uses. They're not cure-alls. And natural doesn't always equal better. And when it comes to hair growth, consistency will always be miracle hacks. Healthy habits and evidence-based treatments will win in the long run. By leaving these myths behind, we can all approach hair care with a clearer head and focus on what truly works for strong, beautiful, shiny hair. If you stuck to the end, thank you so much. I wanted to go more in depth, but I kind of was like looking at the time and I was like, oh my gosh, this has been quite some time. So do let me know if you want some more clarity of one of these subjects or if you have any other myths that you would like me to debunk. Have an amazing day. Thanks again so much for watching and I see you in the next one. Bye.